Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. This is Play It Forward. Real people, real stories. The struggle to play it forward. Episode number 584 is with Mariana from the group Project Renegade. How are you? Good afternoon. Oh my God. I'm so glad I get to finally talk to you because this this whole entire album is exactly what we need right now in music. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that... Uh... That I hear those kind words from you. Thank you very much. You know, but but the thing about it is, is that listeners don't understand that this stuff doesn't happen just overnight. That that this is a process of creativity. Uh yes, of course. I think even you know the writing process of the album was uh, a bit weird, and you know it happened uh, in a really weird way because most of the album, like ninety percent, was written during the pandemic quarantine mm-hmm. period where. You know, we didn't have that much, um, you know, uh, we didn't have anything else to do. So we were kind of uh, just focused on that. So having so much time to just, you know, um, put all your effort in just writing music, it's an amazing thing for a musician to do because creativity is like flowing 24-7. You just spitball ideas with your bandmates and, uh, you know, things are having like a concrete you know, um, form in a, in a totally different way um, than, you know, when you just write one song here and there and, you know, you try to juggle your daily life in between. So I think that, yeah, you know, I mean, creatively, it was a totally different experience than anything that was done before. So I think that is something that you know that is also reflected on how the music on how the music uh, turned out you bring up a very interesting point because i i was that guy that was talking with musicians during the lockdown during the covid-19 and and they were pissed off they they were not in a great place but yet i i swear that music history will one day look back at at this moment where music stopped but you explored and it's going to be one of the greatest moments ever in the history of music I truly believe that because, you know, all the musicians just, you know, had to like sit on their butts and just write stuff. They didn't have anything else to do. So, I mean, that is an ideal situation for a musician. Uh, you, you're not distracted and, you know, you you can focus your uh, 100% all of your efforts into just writing and creating music. And that's, you know, you also have the luxury to do revisions, do re- rewrite stuff that may be in another, you know, um, if, you know, in another, you know, period of, you know, your so far uh, music life didn't have uh, the luxury to do so. So um, I truly believe that all the music that came out because the production of music during that time was humongous. I mean, everybody was writing, everybody, we saw so many new albums and I think it was such a productive uh, period. And, you know, uh, and also that the fact that we didn't ex- we hadn't experienced anything like that before uh it's very you know it's very shocking and very intense for uh the human uh, collective psyche and so i think even more for uh, an artist so i believe that you know emotions are you know uh more intense they are running really high and that's what you put on your art if, wow. if that is music or you know uh painting or poetry or whatever form of art you are doing so yeah i believe that it was a, an opportunity uh, I, you know uh, beneath all that ugliness that we had to live during that time but i truly believe that uh you know uh, a lot of art flourished mm-hmm. due to that I, I, I just did a show on iHeartRadio today that was based on that we yearn for that moment that we had during those two years. That that I mean, I've rearranged my life. I've 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 quit jobs because I want that back that I had, that open space. How has it changed you? And do you find yourself searching for that open space again? Um, for me, uh I have to be honest, I'm a workaholic. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really hard for me to stop, you know, uh, to take a moment and breathe. And, uh, the, you know, uh, the fact that, you know, uh, I have to like, even when, I, when I'm when i on vacation, I have to find something to do. Yep. I, you know, maybe I will, I don't know, clean my house or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Just do something, something that, you know, that is qualified as, you know, work 
so I do not go crazy. So uh, yeah, sometimes when when you know when a break is kind of you know um, uh, mandatory, it's like imposed due to circumstances that you cannot control. That's good for people like me. But uh, and people always tell me to take a break from working. You know, <laughs> uh, but uh right now i try i i do feel the need that you know uh, we need to take some breaks uh here and there of course uh last year you know when things opened up uh live wise for live shows and mm -hmm. for touring and festivals during the summer uh we didn't have the chance to you know i personally didn't have the chance to go on vacation at all so i i i I have to push myself to find that space that you're talking about. So, you know, I push myself to take a little breaks here and there, go to some, you know, travel a little bit, just, you know, change the scenery in my life. Yep. So, you know, I am not, you know, like I don't have the, uh, you know, the the need to work all the time. <laughs> are, are you like me in the way that I, I, a lot of song songs come to me when when I'm while I'm washing dishes? I mean, when I'm doing simple things is when the the, the world of music comes into me. Are, are you are are you in that way too, or do you force yourself to write the song? Mm, I would say that it's fifty fifty for me right. because. Uh, sometimes I have to like okay, say, okay, now I need to, you know, uh, start uh, thinking about the song, you know, get my hands on it. But that's not when the final uh, product, let's say, is going to come out. It's just, you know, if I start the process, uh, say, okay, now uh, it's, uh, I don't know, it's uh, one o'clock in the evening and let's... Um, let's start uh, writing some lyrics. I will write, you know, one or two lines and then I will find myself, uh, you know, just doing something else because most of the time I won't be inspired. And, but because I started that process, maybe at another point during that day or the next day, like you say, when, you know, I'm washing dishes or I'm, or most of the times when I'm driving. That yes, happens to me a lot. absolutely, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, that's when uh, things click in and I'm like, oh my God, I need to find my phone to record, you know, a melody or write down a lyric. Yeah. So I'd say that, you know, um, I think there's like behind the scenes, you know, process in my mind, you know, when that uh, happens. So, but I do need to think, okay, now I'm in writing mode because if I, if I don't say that consciously, it won't happen. People Simple don't like People don't understand the creative mind. When we grab that smartphone and we start putting our ideas in, inside that, they, they think, oh, you're on the phone again? No, I'm not on the phone. This is creativity <laughs> in motion. I mean, I mean, do you see how people look at you in, in that? They, they think you're just, oh, you're on the phone again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I th uh, yeah, I would say so, but I, I don't pay attention to that. For example, I, I could, I can like, dream a melody and just yeah. grab from my phone you know in the night not seeing anything and i'm like okay i'm gonna whisper that because i don't have you know like the strength to actually sing right now so i i don't know i don't have that you know um that uh, i'm i'm not conscious of you know p what people think if i'm writing mm. or you know if i'm finding that creative you know inspiration even if i'm on you know uh i'm walking uh on the road uh and you know something pops in my head i will just pop the phone out and you know yeah. uh, start uh, recording okay maybe people think i'm weird but i don't care <laughs> let's talk about that song token the video is yeah. is is like an open invitation for the world to come to anthens i mean oh my god what you guys do in this video <laughs> is so precious thank you thank you so much Thank you so much. I, I I never thought that you that we would be like a tourist advertisement due, due to that video <laughs> to come to Athens. So uh, yeah, uh, it was uh, an amazing experience, you know, for uh, for us to do such a video. It's the first time we've done something like that. Um, we wanted to um, to do something different, do something yeah. with VFX because. Uh, our new guitarist um, Philip is a VFX artist, and we said we just thought, you know, why not put to good use your talents and you know do something different for us and something different in general because you know we have seen that music videos 
during especially the last uh, years are a little bit the same thing over and over again and uh, we wanted to do something different not only for us but you know for our fans and for the music fans in general so uh, we decided to do something that was heavily based on the VFX and the 3D uh, art that our guitarist uh, is so talented and this is main job also so um, we started brainstorming ideas what we wanted to do the scenario how how things would go scene after scene it was a huge task to undertake because we had to do a lot of pre-production to do uh you know when you're trying to do uh real um real shootings that you will um uh incorporate afterwards with the effects uh, it's a little bit difficult you need to be very careful uh, in order to know what to do, how to move, how, what to expect, mm-hmm. because you don't know what actually is going to come out in the end. Uh, you need to be very careful about the lights, uh, you know, everything, everything, everything. And, you know, um, it was uh, really fun for me also because it was the first time that I had to do so much acting in a video. <laughs> <laughs> and you know uh, I don't have like a weapons or training or a combat training at all uh, and uh, you know I had to do all that stuff for real because uh, you know if it, if it, if they are not real they're not gonna you know be recorded correctly and I don't want to do anything that will you know be like a sorry you know uh, excuse of a of I don't know of combat movements Mm -hmm. so I had to learn how to use the sword and the katana sword is really heavy (laughs) really really heavy so at the beginning I was like I cramped all over my arms and my torso (laughs) Uh, but you know then I after a few you know uh, sessions uh, running around like crazy in my house (laughs) uh, you know I managed to learn some movements uh, a lot more than what went uh, in the video, actually. Uh, and it was really fun. Uh, you know, I just kind of felt like, you know, uh, uh, like a real actor, or so, yeah. you know, yeah. so, of some sort. Yeah. I hear amazing electronics in the background of the music. And then when you look at the album cover, you're going, oh, my God, they totally respect the club lifestyle. I, I, when, when does that, 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 that electronic kind of sound fit into the song? Is it in the studio or is it when you're planning the song before you go into the studio? Oh, it's 100% uh, before the studio. Is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the the song before we recorded in the studio is a hundred percent pre-produced. I mean, we want to be really, really, really sure about uh, how uh, the final outcome uh, of the song is going to be. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, uh, the, uh, we are very lucky because we have um, essentially brought the studio uh, into our home studio. So most of the of the of the instruments, uh, with the exception of the drums, are recorded here uh, in our home studio. So um, we can have that control uh, to know what how it's gonna sound like in the end. So um, we we really like the electronic scene. Yep. Uh, we the 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 aesthetics, the how hardcore they can go, the lights, the 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 everything, everything. We really we really like uh, the electronic scene. So and we're trying to incorporate it as much as we can, even more so now. Um, and you know we're open not only to the electro. Uh, uh, genre, but also to other genres. We are really open to, you know, to blend and fuse styles in our music because that's what makes it interesting and that's, you know, what makes us, you know, um, makes it fresh for us also. We do not we do not want to repeat ourselves. We do yep. not want to yep. um, become stale in a way. And, you know, we do, I do believe that, you know, in the end, everything has that project renegade sound that, that cohesiveness that we want to, and we know we aim for, but we really like to experiment and to expand our horizons musically also. So I, I, I thought I was the freak that did all the stuff in the home studio and then took it to the engineer in the big studio. Be, and because what I would do is I would give them my ideas and then I would go to the engineer and say, this is where I want to go. And he would go, okay, 
I'll get the musicians for you. I'll make sure that this is where you go. Do you save the origin of the song? Because I have the original versions of my song and I have those that we did in the physical studio. And I still believe inside my soul that the original stuff has greater purpose than what was recorded in the studio. Ah, that is a very difficult question because I've been, you know, to, you know, against that dilemma myself, especially when, you know, where I'm, when I'm doing the vocals in the pre-production yeah. stage, sometimes I feel that that first take that you're not thinking about it so much, it kind of has something special that uh, the studio version does not have. So I've been, uh, you know, uh, you know, in that situation myself. Um but like I said, if I if I want to take something, I truly believe that something is better at the earlier stage. I, right now, I have the luxury to take it uh, and you know uh, do the, uh, and uh, leave that version in the final uh, in the final mm-hmm. song. But I get what you mean. You know, when you're not when you're like not filtering everything and you're not in that let's record mode. Uh, sometimes things uh, are more, you know, uh, they have more emotion, I think. They have more, um, I don't know, the, the, the meaning and the performance behind them are, you know, more honest, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I, I I've been known for for many songs where I I didn't like what I did in in the actual recording studio, and I said you got to take what I did and you need to marry it with what we're doing, and and they look yeah. at me kind of strange, but it's like no, you don't understand. I felt something in that moment in my own home studio that that I'm not getting in your studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe it's you know the fact that you're trying so much. That's it. When you're in the studio, I, I think that sometimes takes the, you know, the flavor out of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So are you guys big movie fans? And the reason why I bring that up is because the song Blood Switch, this is a movie in the making. You really <laughs> deliver this song. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we are really, I really, really big fans of music. I yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, for Bloodwitch, uh, for example, uh, the the it's you know it's based on a on a fictional character to say uh, Bloodwitch is uh, a character that you know that is saying all those uh, words, all those lyrics, and you know uh, we get inspired from movies a lot. Um, even for Token, uh, just a fun fact, you know, when I was uh, preparing for the video, I used to watch all the Matrix new movies because I was like, okay, how are they preparing themselves yeah. and how are they doing yeah. all that stuff, you know? <laughs> even the backstage footage, I was looking at it and, you know, seeing what they are going through and what they have to, you know, learn. But yeah, we really get inspired from movies. Um, and you know the sci-fi genre in general even uh, books and you know everything everything uh you know um you know in the end the inspiration for every song is you know real life it could be like a movie it could be a book it could be something that you heard in the street it could be a conversation so you know definitely movies are you know a huge inspiration for us most of the songs are coming in at 3 30 4 45 i love that because that that gives me enough space to accept the next song that's coming up next mm-hmm. uh yeah i totally agree um uh, you know we used to write longer so- mm-hmm. songs uh, in our previous, you know, um, albums. But, uh, you know, uh, right now we want to just give a more condensed experience, I think. Yeah. Uh, because we also don't have the, uh, you know, the attention span anymore to for anything longer than that. And, uh, you know... Uh, for Blood Witch, you know, um, it is a uh, it is a song that uh, it is a little bit longer, I should say. Mm-hmm. But I think that uh, you know it needed that space for it to you know to develop itself and tell that uh, that story that we wanted. And you know, going through the motions and you know that. Um, that now you'll know my name and then afterwards you know all that uh, all that you know the breakdown and you know the backing vocals that are kind of you know like more dreamy and then you know going again at the end on the chorus you know um 
I think it's a very nice transition, even if it's, you know, like a longer song yeah. than usual. Yeah. What did you feel in your heart when, when, when you guys recorded Ultra Terra and it became the name of the album and yet it's the title track hit? What was it in that song that said, hey, look, this is what we need to call this project? Um, to tell you the truth, I don't remember if the if the name or the song came first. Right. I'm not so sure about that. I cannot actually remember it. I think that the name came first because we had uh, some songs that we that we wanted to, you know, that we were feeling that the concept of, you know, like an ultimate earth where people are trying to uh, achieve the perfect. Uh, uh, the perfect place to live, uh, the the place where everything is, you know, um, that there's nothing that, you know, goes wrong, that everything is like super technologically uh, advanced, that, you know, that, um, uh, you know, there's no fault in it, but in the end is like, you know, it becomes uh, a too much, uh, technologically advanced yep, yep, yep. place for the human beings to be where actually they are not welcome anymore because you know humans are not perfect they are not you know they're not ones and zeros they live in the gray areas in between most of the times they have emotions they have their you know their um faults um and that is what is beautiful about the human nature also so you know that was a concept the uh, of the album and that was something that you know was um uh, was represented in the in the in the songs that we had so far up uh, at the moment that we decided that the album is gonna call is gonna be called Ultra Terra, and uh, I think that the that the song that became the title uh, that is uh, after the title of the album came afterwards, really? and uh, it was like you know like uh, for me Ultra Terra is a very you know epic song. It has like a, it's a musical journey. It has like epic, you know, closure of everything uh, on the album, although it's not the last song. Uh, and, you know, it just um, encompasses everything that we wanted to say through the album. It's mm -hmm. super, you know, it has like a lot of electronics. It creates it creates that spacey feeling that, That's you know, uh, that you're kind of floating in the air. Mm -hmm. And it also had, has that this the desperate you know urgency that something is going wrong and we need to you know like uh, correct that thing uh we need to you know find a different solution so uh yeah i think that uh yeah i think that the title came first and then the song uh you know fit uh what we wanted to do uh in the album in yeah. the end yeah project renegade is is really if, if somebody asked me what, what what is it what how is it they do with their their music and i would have to say that you guys are masters of transition in the way of 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 that guitar and the vocals they're not competing against each other they're accenting their own presentation as as superstars in their own right uh, you know, our drummer would be really, really, really happy to hear you say that because he's such a fan of how uh, a part trans, uh, you know, uh, is making the tra transition to the next part. Yes, uh, it's something that he always, you know, tells us where we need to be, you know, careful how we're gonna, you know, go from one part to the other. Uh, and uh, I'm really happy that I hear you say that because I, I always also as a as you know as the as a singer of the band try to you know to make everything you know flow as much you know as seamlessly as i can yeah so um i like co the you know i like the cohesion of a song i don't like you know songs that are too choppy uh which is something that we see a lot uh, nowadays you know due to the fact that you know there's also a limitation in time uh, when you you know you're putting music out there, hmm. so uh, I always try to find that you know that uh, introduction to the next mm -hmm. part by ending the previous part. So uh, I'm really glad that you took notice of that. One of the, one of the other strong parts is that you like to play with our emotions because you take a song like Critical Mutations. This song is playing with my imagination and, and, and it does so in a way because when I listen to music, I go, my God, if I saw this band live in concert, what the hell would this song look like on that stage? 
<laughs> thank you, thank you very much. And that's you know why why you also uh, mentioned, like you also mentioned before, uh, that we like movies. I mean, for me, critical mutations, for example, is like a totally like an introduction to the whole ultra terror movie, uh, and that's the purpose of the song also. Uh, yeah, we we like to um, uh, to highlight the emotions of the of the song. We need we we really um strive through our performances and our uh, writing to you know to create like a, a special feeling for each song and sometimes we also talk about it you know between us and we uh, say that you know this song uh, brings me that emotion and also that that color for example you know uh blood which brings me the color of uh, you know uh, of green or uh token brings me you know in mind the color of uh, of silver I don't know, uh, and uh, you know that is actually. I think that uh, that is a, you know, a way to interpret feelings also through color. So you know, we really, 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 really strive to not just create you know a product for people to just consume and listen. We want to create uh, an experience and you know to touch people uh, with our music and create the emotions that we ourselves, when we were you know younger and right now, of course. Uh, we experience through other people, mu other yep. people's music. Yep. Uh, you know, that's that's what we like about you know uh, music that that it touches us, that it's here when we need it, that it helps us go through difficult situations. That you know, um, uh, that is music, and especially heavy metal music is like the shy, the, the the bright star that guides us through difficult times, and we are really you know. Uh, it's a great honor, you know, when people tell us that it's the same for them yeah. with our music. How do you deal with the history of Greek music? Because a lot of people know the traditional songs, but man, they don't know what you're delivering. And and it's like you've opened up a door for us to go in there and explore a new sight and sound. Uh, you mean the traditional Greek music, like? Oh know, yeah, because like I'm we, yeah, I'm a okay. I'm a DJ at Greek schools. I know what I'm playing okay. at Greek schools, and and I cannot uh, okay. wait to bring your music to those students. Oh, thank you. That would be amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, the, uh, Greek music, uh, traditional Greek music is uh, total. You know. Uh, totally different. It has totally different instruments, also. Uh, you know that are you know uh, traditional to our country here. Uh, there is a big separation right now, and you know between those genres. I do not know if you know our music can be considered Greek. It's just us that we are you know Greek citizens. Um, but you know, uh, I think that in the end, everything is you know music. It doesn't matter if it's Greek, if it's right, uh, American, right, if right. it's you know German or whatever. If you like it, I, I don't know. I've uh, you know I've heard uh, I I love world music, for example. I like I like you know um, Japanese music. I like you know if if something you know is you know at you know it. It's compatible with your taste. Doesn't matter where it comes from, if it's you know traditional to that country or not. You know, it's an expression. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I can't let you go until we talk about no country white flags. And the reason why is because I think it's so relatable with the global times today. Is that my, my interpretation of the song is that we're all in these places that have boundaries, but this song says you don't have to have boundaries. It is so authentic. Thank you so much. Uh, that song was, you know, um, something totally different. We've never done a song like that before. And it was the first time for me to sing a ballad, uh, the piano ballad uh, for, uh, you know, with a band. Um, yeah, uh, for me, that, that is, that is No Country for White Flags is actually the last song of the album. And for me, it's like, the meaning of it is that, you know, we are uh, in this, a uh, shitty situa situation, you know, where everything is going, you know, worse and worse and worse yeah, yeah. Uh, for everybody, not only for here in Greece, but for everybody in the whole world. I mean, right now there is a war that is going on, uh, you know, next door here. Uh, and, you know, uh, there are so many difficulties uh, that are that people are facing right now. 
But in the end, what you need to have in mind that is that there's someone out there, there are people out there who are willing, you know, to fight with you and to create a better future with you. And, you know, for me, that song uh, is a hopeful song that, you know, through all yes. that, you know, darkness, yep. Yep. you can always reach out, uh, reach out and find a hand that will, you know, uh, pick you up and, you know, uh, get you, uh, you know, out of this, you know, difficult situation that you're actually uh, experiencing right now. Wow. We need each other. Uh, we need to have solidarity. And it's the only way that we're going to survive. So where can people go to find out more about you and to buy merchandise? Because people need to locate where you are and to really, really physically experience the music like I did. Um, you can find us, of course, in all of our socials, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Project Renegade Official. Uh, same thing goes for TikTok that we opened uh, during the last days. We are really newbies to that. Uh, and uh, you can buy merch in our Bandcamp page. You can just uh, yes. search Project Renegade and uh, you will find all of our merch there. Uh, it's available for you. We, we, we ourselves uh, ship everything to you. And, uh, you know, you you know, it's the best way to support the band, just buy their merch. That, you're absolutely right about that. Please come back to the show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you so much. I, it's a, it was an honor for me to talk with you. And of course, anytime I'm available to uh, continue our beautiful discussion. I love it. Be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. You too.